Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live with a beautiful painting um, called Blessed Wagon. So it's supposed to be all about having abundance, and it's very fun. So we've got uh, template kits available online right now. Um, also, we'll have a traceable available very soon. Um, but basically, real cute little templates. Let me show you real quick. So this gives you an idea, I won't show you all of them, but gives you an idea of how cute they are and how they fit onto the canvas here and they're super easy to use so very fun all right we also have all of our supplies laid out so we've got having internet issues hopefully it'll stick with me okay all right so y'all are back sorry about that we're having some internet issues today i guess everybody is online here in guthrie all right so we've got all of our paint laid out um, we've got our rag or paper towels we've got our fun little brushes water and so we're all ready to go. Okay, so let me talk about the trace here that I've done so far. You're welcome to do this in pencil. That's definitely advised for beginners. And then once you're happy with it, this kind of depends on your comfort level of, or taste, but you can do a Sharpie um, line art around this too to help really firm it up so that you never lose all of the information that you've traced all that visual information that you've traced you'll never lose it with a sharpie so some people really prefer that so that's certainly an option but either way works just fine okay so i'm going to start with the ship lap first i'm going to be running that through the background here and i definitely prefer sharpie and here's why because as a teacher i have to be able to keep the pace going pretty quickly so i can't allow for dry time so the sharpie allows me to paint through images and have those bleed through so you're welcome to tap into that little secret if you want um, or not if you don't like the look of it the way to do it differently is just to make sure you just give it dry time and then you can just paint into those sections. You can also wait and delay your trace later too. Like you can paint your whole background, then you can come back in with the tracing tools and trace it on over the top too after it dries. A lot of my students do that. So either way, it works great. All right, so I'm gonna start with a pretty big brush to get going here. And we're gonna do a really fun neutral background. Let's see, I know, here it is. I have a lot of paint plates out. Okay, so what I've got to start with is just a really pretty light gray that I'll do. So I'm gonna start with a nice big dollop of the white and then just barely a tiny touch of the black. So I'm gonna touch just a little bit here into the black, push that into the mix. That will give me a light heather gray color. Oh, <laughs> I just put a whole bunch of black in there. You know what? Problem solved, a lot more white. Let's go off to the side here. I was talking and not paying attention to my plate. All right, so a lot more white, little bit of black. Now, if you wanna warm this up a little bit to bring in some hues of taupe, you certainly can. And I like to do that with a little bit of some gold, or you can also do that with just primary yellow too. So just a tiny little hint of primary yellow can do that for you or a little bit of some gold paint. So I'll push that into the mix. I also keep a lot of pure white off to the side as well. And I'll just push this into my background because again, my whole background here is going to be this really pretty shiplap color. So I'll be doing that first. And I'll just push this in in a horizontal stroke because it's basically going to be in the same pattern as the wood grain. So again, just nice horizontal strokes, and you can see how all of my work is just kind of popping right through here too. Hi, Shannon. Welcome, happy Sunday. It's Sunday here as we were recording this. Beautiful day outside. About 88 degrees here. <laughs> Thank God we have air conditioning. But yeah, it's really pretty today. Great weather, lots of sunshine. All right, so I definitely keep a lot of white going through this process. And I'll be mixing back and forth between that taupe, which again is a lot of white, big dollop of white. Tiny little touch of the black, be very minimal with the black. And then you can also do just tiny little touches again with either that primary yellow and when I mean tiny touches, I mean literally just barely touch into that paint, put it into the mix. 
and then that will warm it up to more of a taupe color. But I keep it really light back here. So this is almost like that. The feeling you want to evoke here is a little bit of that, um, like a shabby chic kind of look. So it looks very whitewashed, but a little bit aged, and that's why we bring in those creamy tones too. So it'd be really lovely. Bring this all the way through here. Lots of white. Always takes a lot more white than you think. And we'll push that all the way through the back. All right. Quite lovely. And then, if you want to go ahead and do your ship lap now, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and take this lovely brush. I call this Big Daddy. He's awesome. Put that in my bucket of water. Then I'm going to get Mama. Hi, Larry. Welcome, welcome. So I'm going to take my Sweet Mama brush here. I'm going to press into a little bit of this lovely black. But I don't want it to be too severe. I want it to be kind of like a charcoal color. So I'll do a little bit of white with the black. This will be a dark charcoal color. I want to go ahead and apply really firm pressure to the end of the brush. So look how it is super thin on the edge. That is a beautiful thing. So then what I do here is I go ahead and hold that brush just like a pencil and I come right towards my canvas. And I just go ahead and take it, this straight line here, all the way across. And while the paint is still wet, that's a very wonderful thing. It gives me a nice, soft blend into that white. So that's an awesome thing. And we just have a little bit of that shiplap running through there. So we've got that going. See, that was a very minimal touch, but it definitely gives you that feeling of shiplap. So that's all you need. So that's the reference that we have going on there. And then next, I'm going to do my wagon. All right, so my wagon is going to be a really pretty turquoise color. And I wanna go ahead and use my mama brush again. So here's the mama brush. And I wanna go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of the white, nice big dollop of the blue, and then a nice big dollop of the green. All right, so I've got blue, white, and green. I'm gonna go ahead and mix all these colors all together. This will give me a beautiful turquoise color. Very lovely. And again, this is my marble brush. She's a half inch gold Taclon brush. I love Taclon. I didn't even know what Taclon was for a long time growing up as an artist. But turns out it's just a wonderful synthetic material that is quite beautiful because it stays very, very firm. And so that is an amazing quality with a brush, in my world anyway. I, I actually prefer it if the brush maintains its shape and it just allows me to be a lot more uh, creative with my movement here with acrylic painting. Hello, John, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm working on my wagon here. So I do the outline first. So in the beginning, my cutting work is a little bit more uh, like holding it like a pencil. Hey, thank you, Larry. Appreciate that. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'll go ahead and do this cut and work all the way through. Now, what's nice, I'm just taking advantage of it. My background is still a little bit wet, so I'm getting a nice softened effect. It's blending into the turquoise. They play well together because this was just kind of that shabby chic white, off-white. So it's blending in nicely with the turquoise. So because they play well together, that works for me. Now I will give you a little caution. If you're working at home and you come in with another color here, and let's say you want a different color, for example, I would definitely let that background set up and dry if it's different, for example, if it's pink or um, something like that. That can really create quite a bit more interfer interference with your um, color blending. So sometimes if you're not sure how they're going to do together, um, just let it set up and dry. It's always safer that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and forge ahead because I need to 
work quickly since I'm going live and just push in all of this turquoise. Now, when you do your cut and work, you'll notice that when you hold the brush more like a pencil, it applies more pressure. And so it will dig into that paint. So if you're struggling a little bit with digging into the paint and getting some transparency, what you'll wanna do is make sure you've got enough paint on that flat side of the brush and then hold it more over to the side, just like that. And then that will give you a much more opaque quality over the surface, so very helpful there. And you can feather this out a little bit too with a little bit more of a textural cross stroke. So I like to do a lot of repetition. Looks like I make little X's over and over and over again. All right, now I'm doing a little bit of this cut in work. It's about to get crazy detailed on that little wheel. So we're gonna have to switch gears to a smaller brush. This, these little sections in here are not too bad because big wide open area and then just straight lines that give me a little bit more space. But when I get into this wheel, you'll see there tiny little details. So we'll definitely have to switch over to like our little buddy brush or a little bit brush. I'm gonna start by making my little bits of line work here first. I'm gonna feather that back in. All right, this circle's pretty big, so I can still use the edge side of the brush to go all the way around. So I'll use this big brush as much as I can. You know what, I just realized I've got long lines kind of running through here, so I might be able to sneak through with my big brush all the way through this process. And I am, I'm so excited. I love it when I get to do that. And then I take this circle all the way around. I just did a little bit of cut through. Okay, I may have to switch now. Okay, <laughs> I, took it as, I took it as far as I could go. I came to the end of the road on that big brush. Okay, so now I need, all right, trying to reconnect. <laughs> I don't know. That's usually a sign that everybody is vying for internet attention here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. That's where we're coming to you live from. So I didn't, I didn't uh, say anything that you didn't get to hear, but if I see that again, I'll definitely just do a little recap of my thoughts and steps and wait for it to catch up. All right, so we're gonna work into the little wheel here. Yep, y'all are still there. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so there's our fun little wheel. And then it became a little bit tiny in through here, so I wanna make sure and feather that back out again too. So I'll come back in with my little buddy brush and I'll just kinda of do a light little stroke in through here. And just kinda of lightly feather that out. I wanna make sure I get good coverage all throughout there. All right. Wonderful. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and do some really pretty little roses. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my little buddy brush here into my water. Now here's a little thing about acrylic paint. It will definitely set up and dry very quickly on you. Um, sometimes within about five minutes it can dry. So if you do not have time to get to your brushes while you're working, you always wanna make sure and place them in the water. Let me give you a little visual on that. Ta-da! All right, so definitely do that, and here's why, because if they set up and dry, they'll take all your nice brushes and they will turn them into sticks. And you don't want that, you want them to be brushes. So again, put them in the water, let them always rest there. Sometimes during classes I see beginners just rest their brushes down somewhere on their table and they let them sit there for a long, long time, and then they harden and dry up on them. So yes, know that acrylic paint dries very quickly. That's a good little tip for y'all. And hello, Kathy, welcome. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna start placing in the color for our roses. So I have my beautiful mama brush again, and I want these colors to be light and bright and beautiful. And so I am going to go into a little bit of some red and maybe some orange and some white. So I'm gonna start with just some red and white to begin with. That will be my base. 
just a nice even mix to give me a really pretty pink. And I'll place that into that shape there. And basically our rose shapes, of course we provide all the shapes for you with either a, a tracing, a traceable, or a template. Um, but also if you just want to freehand some of these, I always start off my roses as just nothing more than lumpy circles. So that's it. That's how simple and easy they are, just lumpy circles. But here we go, just little lumpy circles. And then if you give your mind the freedom to know that that's all they are to begin with, it gives you a lot of flexibility to add so much more to your bouquet here of roses. Because there's no pressure, you can make those little tiny shapes or big shapes all over and kind of poke them all into the bouquet wherever they are needed and you're not feeling confined by any one specific shape or the size rather of that shape. So you're always welcome to be creative and free and just kind of do your own thing. See how simple that was? That was just little lumpy circles everywhere. So that's a base. Now what I will do is to bring in a little bit of texture into the rose. I'm going to switch over to a little bit brush. All right, so here is Little Bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little twist into the white paint. Just like that. And I'm gonna lay it down more on the flat side of the brush, spinning it in kind of like little half circles, or little parentheses. I like to use the word parentheses sometimes because I feel like the beginner's brain connects better to that. That's a typical move that most of us do. Every day we're very familiar with it. The hand is used to it. You're used to that message that the brain sends the hand to do a parentheses. So it doesn't intimidate you. All right, so that's basically all it is. And you just place it all the way around that shape. Starting with the lightest color first. So I always start with this white first. Roses are truly one of my most favorite flowers to do, especially with this particular style. And I think the reason why I feel that way is because beginners always have so much success and I love seeing accomplishments, that's my goal. So I want you guys to relax, feel a sense of accomplishment, feel great while you paint. So when things work, even for the beginner, that's what really Makes me feel awesome. Makes me feel all jazzy and stuff. <laughs> Do y'all feel jazzy? I don't know, I just made that up. <laughs> I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm feeling jazzy. And now I'm thinking of Richard Simmons and Jazzercise. Anybody, <laughs> anybody out there old enough to know who Richard Simmons is? Oh my goodness. I just love him, he's so fun. Okay, so now we have our beautiful base happening with our roses. Now I need to come in with some fun different colors. So now I'm gonna go with some darker shades that will create some wonderful contrast. This will help bring in the shadows that will happen. So I still wanna use a little bit brush. So I'm going to come in with, I'm gonna take a clean one over here off to the side. And I'm gonna start with some red. So I'm gonna go just dark red Pick that up, little spots first, right in the center. Okay, so a little dot. So this feels like you are making a little comma, just a little, whoosh, and then lift off with a light hand. Fun sound effects are allowed throughout this process. Got a little, little thick and heavy on that one. I went back over that. All right, so there's that center shadow effect. And again, I did this with my darkest red. So I do another one right through here. All right, then we just repeat the same pattern that we had before. So this is just like little parentheses. But you know what I do? I don't make them too perfect. Kind of add a little wiggle. And just lightly push those around in that circular pattern. Little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of pressure. 
So it feels still like that same basic shape of a parentheses. But again, you try to wiggle your hand a little bit. You don't want too much perfection on this. You want that, orga that you know, basic organic quality happening. And then if you get a nice soft blend into the white, that's totally awesome too. And I always say to people, if you have a little bit of a shaky hand, then guess what? This is your friend. You finally have that working for you as a benefit. So just kind of go with the flow. A little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a half circle. And I will say too, I think close up, it, it kind of scares people a little bit. They, they don't feel like it's going to be perceived as a rose. And then just step back away from it for a little bit and then you'll be so surprised at how, yay, it looks like a rose. And if it doesn't, just keep walking backwards. <laughs> the farther away you go, <laughs> you'll go, oh, really far away, maybe it looks like a rose. <laughs> All right, now we can add a different color to this. So I like to add a teeny amount of some orange. So this will bring in a beautiful kind of like a coral quality to it too. So you can play a little bit with this bright, vibrant orange. And I'll do just a few touches. I'm a little bit more minimal with this third color here. So little touches of this. Just tiny little accents. And even if there is a soft blend, which we actually really love, they play well together, so it's all good. We get a nice, again, coral feeling to it, so that's a good thing. All right, so now I'm gonna do a cute little bird over here. He's kind of peeking out. And I wanna use my little bit brush again. And let's see, I'm always thinking, hmm, what color do I wanna do? So, Let's do like a, a light, light soft gray color. I think that'll be pretty. Hi, Deborah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, light, light soft gray. But I'm gonna start with the outline first so I don't lose it. I don't wanna lose that shape. And then I'll fill in with some of that so that I will get a nice soft blend with it. And it'll just look kind of like a light soft gray there in the center. I think in the original I had gone with more of like a pink color on this. But you can do all kinds of colors for a bird. You could do a blue bird or a yellow bird, white bird. All right, so I am going to now come in with a little bit of the white, just pure white now. Little bit brush. And as I get really close to that edge, it will softly pick up some of that darker charcoal gray that we just pressed down. And so it will create nice little touches of that lighter gray that happens through there. So I love that effect. Nice, light, soft mix between there. Don't worry, I'll come back and get that eye here in a minute. I have a fun little technique for you. Now I want to accentuate some of the feather lines that will happen through here. So I want to pick up a little bit more of the darker charcoal gray, my little bit brush. And then I will come into those little sections where that begins. And then I'll just kind of do one little stroke right through just a nice little thin line, and there it is. Okay, so we have a cute little eye that needs to happen in here. So I do a fun little technique with the handle of the brush. So I take the handle, and I dip it into the black in this case. So I just dip straight down into the black. You can see the edge side now of the handle. And then I just press straight forward. There's that cute eye again. So, Hello, <laughs> hello cute eye. All right, now I did a big brush handle on that. 
so I have a nice big shape. The other thing that you can do is you can come in with a really tiny pinpoint to make a flash point for the eye. So in this case, just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and do the top of a pencil. And also I will tell you too at home, let this go ahead and set up and dry just to be safe, then come back in and do this you know, with the white paint. I'm about to tell you the technique, but you'll take that pencil top. See, I touched down into the white paint right there. I'm gonna go ahead and touch right over the top, and there's my little flash point right over the top. But just to be safe, do go ahead and let that black set up and dry because sometimes you can get uh, kind of a, a strange little blend between the two. And in this case, we would prefer not to have that. Um, so just it's just safer to go ahead and let black eye set up and dry, come back in with that little white dot, and just go straight forward. And that makes a beautiful little flash point over the top, and it really gives the eye a tremendous amount of personality. So it's really helpful there. All right, now we need to make that cute little beak of his so that he can sing a beautiful song. So we're going to come in with some really pretty bright yellow and our little bit brush here. All right, so I am using, again, just primary yellow. Little bit. Just dip right into it. The hold on the brush kind of feels just like a pencil. And I'll just go straight forward. And that makes our precious little beat because it looks like he's singing a sweet little song right there. All right, wonderful. Okay, so now I've got some fun little toadstools happening down here at the base. So I wanna do some really pretty bright, vibrant color over the top. I was a little bit unnatural in this in terms of the coloring. I just went ahead and did some beautiful red. I know we don't normally see red toadstools in real life, but this is kind of a magical world. <laughs> so I just have fun with it. It's kind of like um, Willy Wonka's world. So very magical. Go ahead and place all that beautiful color into the top. And then just to make this one a little bit different, I'll add a little bit of the orange and the white. Do that over the top. And then the base, I'll go ahead and come in with a lighter, like a yellowish white color. So I'm gonna use that white and my primary yellow. I'm also going to use my little buddy brush Kind of get the excess water off of there. So here's little buddy and a little bit of primary yellow, a little bit of white. And then let's go ahead and position that into the base here. And if you want this to be a little bit more earthy, I'm gonna start with this and then I'll show you an example to make it a little bit more like a, a taupe feel to it. So I add just a teeny amount of black into the mix, just barely touch into it. A lot more white. But that will, that little gray tone will help push this to more of a taupe color if you don't want this to be too vivid and you want it to be a little bit more subdued. All right, so that is the beautiful base there of our fun little toadstool that we have. All right, I'm gonna let that set up and dry. We'll come back in here in a moment with some decorative pattern work. But then up here at the top, we'll go ahead and do some beautiful uh, leaves. So it's either going to be turquoise or some bright spring green. Both of those are gonna work really well for us. All right, so we have our little bit brush. And let's start with a bright spring green first. Okay, so we've got a little bit of white. A little bit of green. And our little bit brush. And to get a nice firm point, we do a quick little twist here into the paint. 
lovely. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do some of these really pretty leaves that pop out over the top. You know what else I want to add? My favorite color, Viridian. I just love this stuff. So I'm going to show you. So that's what it looks like in the bottle. And then this is what it looks like on my plate. Okay, so I'm gonna push a little bit of that into that beautiful spring green. And it really just makes this super dynamite. I just love this color. So it adds a, a strong teal quality to it, which I really like. And then I did kind of a pre-sketch of some interesting little things kind of popping out through here. So let's talk about the leaf shape. So at first, it looks like I make what looks like a curvy V upside down. So like a curvy letter V upside down. Hi, Donna. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Yes, this is my Goodwill find. We go to Goodwill all the time and we make magical things out of Goodwill and they know us really well up there and they had this in the back and they said, I have your bracelet, you are gonna love this bracelet. And they brought it out to me and I said, yes, I do. <laughs> so, isn't it fancy? It's my Goodwill bracelet. <laughs> yes, yay. And hi, David, hi, Billy. Uh, do I have a preference on the brand of paint? Well, yes, I do, now that you ask. Um, we actually use Royal and Langnickel, so it is a beautiful, this is what we sell on our website. But truthfully, it is very, um, even if I didn't sell it, I would absolutely recommend it. So it is very, um, like a heavy body, really good consistency of paint that blends well, good stamina really rich, vibrant color, so I just love it. So yes, thank you for asking. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go ahead and place this into all these little shapes here. Fun little leaves. Now here's the thing about leaves in terms of the shape. Okay, so it can kind of look like you make little V's that are, have a little bit of a soft curve to it like a voluptuous V, or you can make what looks like a little parentheses, parentheses. So let's do that, parentheses, parentheses, and then you just fill it in. Now watch your pinky, oh, and by the way, there's my little tip that I do, didn't talk about it, but I'll talk about it now. Sometimes if you need to stabilize your hand while you're working, you can rest the weight of your hand on your pinky. It acts like a training wheel on a bike. So definitely do that, but just make sure that when you press it down somewhere that you don't stick it into wet paint. Like I would definitely want to avoid my eye area right now because that would goober up my eye and I do not want to do that. So be careful with where you place it, but it definitely helps to stabilize the hand. So I'm still just kind of filling in Beautiful little leaves here. Making sure that they are definitely supporting the weight of all the roses underneath so that you can see that these roses are definitely growing from their little pots that are obscured by the wagon, but they're there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill all this in and do, now I'm gonna come in with a few little touches of the darker shades just to add a nice little accent. I'm doing this with that little touch of Viridian. Doing little accents here. Make sure and push this on all of them now to get a nice little balance. And then I have a few little like green, uh, little sprays of green here. So little curved lines that come out, little blades of, maybe, uh, maybe these are, we'll call that monkey grass for fun. And I need that to have a little bit of some highlights. So and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of yellow.
I'll come back in a little bit dark now. Bring in that shadow again. All right, so now I wanna do a fun little outline around my agate, my little wagon here. So I've got my little bit brush, a little bit of that Viridian again, and I want a soft little top here, right on top. I wanna to make sure I softly blend that in. Just creates a little hint of shadow underneath there. And then I'm gonna work back into that turquoise that I had in the beginning, just kind of softly fade that in. And now I'm gonna do just a light sketch of that meridian, just all the way around the shape. Just little touches of that, just a light sketch of that. And then just to soften it up just a little bit, then I'll go back over it with a little bit of this really beautiful turquoise color. All right, I'm running out of my turquoise, so let's go over the mix on that again. It is blue, it is white, and it is green. So let's mix all that together. Right, so I want a little bit more of that to kind of softly blend back in. I do, I'm doing little light touches of that turquoise on the inside. All right, now I wanna do a little bit of some fun sketching here on the inside. So I'm gonna take this and kind of do a little squiggle. Okay. So squiggle and then draw it out with a little bit of a line. And then just a few more little white accents here. Light little sketches just with a little bit of white now. Okay, so now, oh, I forgot about that little guy right up there. I'll get him. Let's use a smaller brush on that. Um, I actually wanna go ahead and use a little bit of my Viridian with my little bit brush. And then it's just a straight line coming right up. And then little diagonal lines that come off of the sides here. All right, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of blue now. So that was a center line and then little tiny diagonal lines off to the side. 
Paint's still wet, so I'm getting a nice soft blend between those two. All right, that's quite lovely. And then I'll add just a little bit of a little outline now, very subtle with that blue and a little bit brush. This will come in around all of those little leaves, just a light, soft touch of it. Very delicate hand on this. Do a few of those right in through here to help define the grass. done with that. All right, so now we need to go ahead and come back in with some of that beautiful pattern that comes in over the top of the little toadstools here. Okay, so the question is, <laughs> uh, do they still have the place you can eat at and spend the night and I think play Q game in Guthrie? Wow, um, okay, <laughs> so we still have tons of places to eat. Um, our favorite here in town, oh my gosh, there's so many good places, but we love Stables Cafe, and the owner there is Debbie. I love her. She's been such a beautiful mentor to me, so of course I just love her. Uh, recommend that as a place to eat. And then um, spend the night. So at this point, a lot of us have gone a different direction. We used to have a place to spend the night, but we are now just, we just have tenants now. We just rent it out. Um, but Dominion House is extraordinary. They also have a restaurant there too, which is very good. Um, so, and then play Clue, oh Clue, not Q. <laughs> play Clue. Uh, I don't know that game. I mean, I know the board game Clue, but I know um, the, there was a place that had, was called Boarding House that used to have all these games. And unfortunately, they closed. I'm so sorry. Oh, maybe they're still open. So the, yeah, they're still open. Um, but you know what else? Stacy's restaurant is on our block too, and they have all these board games that are out. So I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly you're asking about, but there's lots of fun options. We also have a Guthrie Ghost Walk, which is exciting. So uh, Stacy here in Guthrie takes these. Another Stacy takes people on tours and she tells everybody about all the legends of ghosts everywhere. So that is a very fun little tour too. That's awesome. And it's super appropriate now for social distancing because everybody can kind of, you're outdoors and you can stand apart and have fun and it's just awesome. So that's, an, that's another super fun activity. So yeah, maybe more information than you ever wanted to know, but there it is. All right, so let's talk about pattern work here on our lovely little toadstool. So we can do a dot pattern. All right, so I have my little bit brush now. I'm going to use the handle. So we're gonna come into the white paint. There it is, and we will press straight forward. And it creates these beautiful little polka dots. And I just try to make it kind of random, place those all over the surface area here. Ta-da! Isn't that fun? I'm gonna do the same thing on the pink one. We'll just do fun little polka dots. And of course, you could have done a different color there too. So I'll do that all over here. All right, there it is. Now we have fun little grass that we can place in. So I'm going to be using my little bit brush for that as well. And I wanna go ahead and do a little mix of some white and some green. And so here's my little bit brush. Again, just even mix, equal parts, green and white. And I start at the base and I just pull up from the base, pull up and then lift off with a light hand. And I just do, just, these kind of randomly all over the base here. I'm gonna go ahead and do it definitely at the base of my little fun toadstools happening here. And I'll just take it all the way across, but I'm basically just dipping my brush into equal parts titanium white. Start at the base and just pull straight up and then lift off with a light hand.
take it all the way across. White and green. Just a really fun touch of spring here. Again, just still equal parts. Nothing fancy, real simple stroke. And I just take it all the way along the base here. And kind of randomly go different directions too, so that helps a lot. Okay, so now all we have to do is the lettering up at the very top here. All right, so for beginners, what I definitely recommend is even just using a Sharpie, because you can go over this whole thing. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a demonstration on that just to show you how easy it is. And then I'll also show you with paint here too. So I need to be careful that, yeah, thank goodness that's dry. Uh, but basically you'll come in with your Sharpie and you can see how easy this is, and it looks fantastic. And so you can do your lettering with your Sharpie. Or, you know, another thing you can do, here's what I'm going to do just to help demo. You can actually do the whole thing in Sharpie to start with. That gives a really found, good foundation. Then you can follow up with paint. Now, let's talk about the loops. Always make sure you outline the loop on the outside of the loop hole. That way you don't close in the loop. So I'm going to make sure and make my line around the outside of that shape because I could have lost my L look. It could have just closed it off completely. So again, here on the E, I'll come around the outside. Always come on the outside of that shape and then fill in. And it's going to get me again on the S. Got to be real careful with those little tiny loop areas. Just make sure you get them on the outside. So again, watch your loop. And here's that little E again. Tag it on the outside. Don't close it off. Loops everywhere. So many loops. Okay. Okay, so that's how easy it is with a Sharpie. Now, you can come back in. This is a great cheat, by the way, because it really helps. It's so much more stable to do it that way. Then you come back in with your little bit brush. Do a nice little twist into that black paint. So I'll twist it like in between my fingertips. That loads up the brush, but it also twists it into a nice fine point, nice and tiny. And then you can go ahead and follow up over the top for that more authentic look of paint, but you've got yourself stabilized now with all of your outline work. So then you can just kind of follow in right over the top there. So you could even just come in and do little accents there. All right, so it gives it kind of a nice little texture and I'm gonna go ahead and continue working that all in at a later time. But that definitely gives you the basic idea of how to do that. Makes it super, super fun and easy for beginners. So now we are done. This is so exciting. All right, so we have just completed our beautiful blessed wagon. So it's super cute. We have all the tools that you need online. We sell the kits that come with everything that you need for a paint party for one, all the way up to a paint party for 50. So that's all brand new. We also have just, if you have supplies already at home and you just need the shapes, we've got the templates, which 
here's our beautiful little templates. So you can do templates or you can do a traceable. So traceable gives you a lot more detail and we sell our traceables with some graphite paper too. So it's a really nice, easy transfer process. Makes it super fun and easy for beginners. So yay, so we're all done. This is exciting. And I wanna thank y'all so much for joining us today. I've had a lot of fun. Y'all have a beautiful, happy Sunday. And I will see you tomorrow, Monday, we're going to be painting at 1230, a beautiful, snowman with some buffalo checks. He's super cute. So y'all have a beautiful day and I'll see you tomorrow.